What's up everybody, welcome back to The Art of Crypto, the birthplace of absolutely legendary gains. In this video, well, I'm sure everyone has heard of the absurdity that just happened throughout the crypto markets. Bitcoin just went from 34k to 38k pretty much instantly. And what's next, right? What's next for Bitcoin and Ethereum? And what's happening right now? Are we going to dump? Are we going to go up? If you want to find out, make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to get real in depth. So to kick things off, this Bitcoin right here, you know, it's you know, it's pretty much to our expectation. I mean, if you watch my videos for pretty much any time during the last week, you would have known that I was saying that I'm bullish, right? I'm bullish on Bitcoin, I'm bullish on Ethereum because the order flow has changed. Previously, we had all these protected highs where basically if you were an institution and imagine if you were shorting as an institution, would you really allow the price to come up to stop you out? Let's say you were short from here. Do you think institutions would allow the price to come and stop them out? Absolutely not. And speaking about institutions, what you need to understand is that this entire move up here is caused by institutions. So is this entire move down here, right? Institutions are the ones with hundreds of millions of dollars and pot potentially billions and they're the ones who can move the markets, right? This is retail right here. This is retail. This is retail, right? Meanwhile, these are institutions. Only they can move the markets like this. So I always like to say that if you can't beat them, right? Because there's no way we as retail people are able to beat these institutions. So we just try to follow in their footsteps, right? Try to figure out exactly what they're trying to do and, you know, try to follow in their footsteps. So right now, Bitcoin just did this massive pump. And if you didn't know, this was caused by a massive short liquidation. Now, if you recall, there was once upon a time when I was doing a video about Bevol, right? I said that a big move was coming to Bitcoin. And pretty much this was like, I've been saying that a big move was coming to Bitcoin since like the 1st of July. I've been saying this for almost a month now, right? Because if you just use the Bevol chart, right? Go onto the four hourly, right? You're only supposed to use the four hourly or the daily chart for this one. Basically, you can just plot out some support and resistance lines for Bevol. And you can see that historically, this level at 1.89 has been pretty good support, right? A lot of the times, the price does come back down to 1.89 and then it tends to, to bounce. So I was saying for pretty much three to four weeks now that a big move was coming to crypto. And, you know, I was like a week ago, I was saying, you know, it's bullet. I mean, it's bearish because, you know, we haven't broke through any protected highs. But at the moment, you can see that we have absolutely demolished these protected highs. And right now, I do see Bitcoin potentially going up to, you know, 41K, potentially up to even 50K, 60K, or even 64K. Now, let me explain why I think that is. So if we just zoom out a little bit and go back onto the daily chart, you can see that, remember when I said about protected highs, protected highs are basically, you know, if an institution is still shorting Bitcoin, then it wouldn't allow the price to, you know, break above a protected high. At the moment, we are looking at Bitstamp, or maybe we should be looking at Binance, you know, the Binance Bitcoin chart instead. So think about it this way. If you were short, all right, again, you wouldn't allow the price to break above these protected highs. So these highs are no longer protected. So let's just, actually, let's just remove everything right now. So these highs are no longer protected. So right now, what I can say is that Bitcoin is definitely bullish, which means we should be looking for a pullback to buy Bitcoin. However, that is not the end of the story right now because there are a few other factors to consider. Now, think about it this way. If you watch my videos in the past, you know I always like to say that institutions like to hunt out the liquidity in the markets. So basically, this entire move right here was actually not in the unexpected, right? We totally expected this because, I mean, no, we didn't expect such a, such a violent move, but we did expect it to attack the previous highs, like as I've said in the previous video. So in this case, as it remains to be seen, right, there are two scenarios that could play out. First is because institutions like to hunt out all the liquidity before bringing the price to exactly where they want to go, there is a very good chance, right, or rather there is a chance that Bitcoin, right, after stopping out all the buy stops, right, imagine if you were short, right, if you get stopped out, it means you are forced to buy at that price. So that is what I mean by a buy stop. So imagine if there were a bunch of stop losses right above this area and you just stopped everyone out and then now you are free to, you know, because institutions don't want you to make money. In fact, they don't even do this because they don't want you to make money. Again, if you recall what I said about institutional orders being like ranging between hundreds of millions to billions of dollars, then you would understand that they would need an area of very high liquidity in order to fill their orders. So here's what you need to understand about all of this. 
Basically, institutions like to stop everyone out before bringing the price to exactly where they want, which means there is a good chance that after stopping out everyone in the short side, they might bring the price down and dump it. You know, that, that, it's just a chance because think of it, think of it this way, right? This is called by institutions. And if they're buying to stop you out, then who's selling? Retail. But then retail was selling and they all got stopped out. So after they got stopped out, then their orders become market buy orders. And if they're buying, guess who's selling? Institutions. That's right. Which means there is a chance that, you know, institutions have built up massive short positions at around this area. Now, I know it doesn't look like that on the spot, but if I go to BTC USDT perpetual features, you can see that, you know, it's basically just, it's just chaos, basically. So that is scenario number one, where, you know, we feel you know, we stop everyone out and then we, we start going downwards. Do I think that's likely? I don't know. Do I know exactly what's going to happen? I don't know. I'm just giving scenarios here because to be honest, to be very perfectly honest, I need more price data. Like I need more, you know, price movement or like price action in order to make an accurate deduction. For now, I can only, you know, speculate. And so you should treat this video as such, just me speculating. I'm just making this video uh, sort of as an emergency so that you guys aren't panicking and, you know, at least you guys know exactly what's up. So in order to confirm the first scenario where, you know, we are indeed bearish and that this was just an entire like massive bull trap. In order to confirm this, there is a few things that we need. So if we just go back onto the daily chart, you can see that this massive move upwards on this daily chart was preceded by this last bearish candle right here, which means this area over here is what you call a bullish order block. So let me just draw it out here. This is what you call a bullish order block, which means if the price were to come back down to this area expect this level to be very strong support in fact if the price does come back down here this is where the institutions are very likely going to be buying bitcoin at now if you watch the video that i posted yesterday about bitcoin you would have already known about this level and that you know i was sort of expecting this rising wedge to break down to at least give us an entry before doing this massive pump but turns out we didn't get that so at the moment all we can hope for is for the price to actually come back down to this order block because remember it like Imbalances in the market needs to be filled, right? Right now, all of these right here were imbalances, right? There was a lot of liquidity up here, a lot of liquidity up here. And so in one move, we just stopped everyone out. And so that gives institutions sort of like the go signal to, you know, push the price down. And if they were to push the price down, if we were bullish, right? If we were bullish, I want, like, I want to see Bitcoin hold these, you know, these levels. And in order to refine this entry even more, I'm just going to take a fit retracement, right? Because again, if we go back onto the daily chart, this is an absurd, like this is a big candle right here. So in order to refine this entry a little bit more, we can just draw a fit retracement from swing high of the swing, like from the top of the candle to the bottom of the candle, and we can get this price target at, you know, 3,400. So this is going to be our order block entry number four. So let me just draw that over here. So these are going to be the three entries that we are going to be looking at to get Bitcoin at if it does fall down. And the stop loss for this case right, is going to be, you know, just right below the swing high. Whoops, I placed it all the way up there. So this is where the stop loss is going to be, at least for me, right? I really want to see Bitcoin be able to hold this bullish order block in order to prove that we are indeed bullish. Because right now, if we do drop all the way back down, right? You sort of have to imagine this, right? It's a falling wedge pattern. If you don't know what's a falling wedge, it sort of looks like this, where, you know, the price is coming down, coming down, right? And then the price come down like this until it hits an order block, right? If you were in the private Discord group, you would have learned about this, right? It hits an order block and it bounces. So this is what we are sort of predicting right now. Again, this is just speculation. I'm not saying that the price will indeed come back down to these levels, but if it does, then, you know, these levels would be pretty good to buy. So it would look sort of like this, right? The price will come down, bam, 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 and then break out. And this is when the reversal truly begins. Or a second scenario that could happen is actually made by one of the people in my private Discord server. And, you know, shout out to Muffin Man. This guy has been, this, this guy joined trading like just two months ago or two or three months ago, knowing nothing about trading. And nowadays he's sniping entries as you know, pretty much as well as I am, and maybe even better. So for you guys, if any of you are interested, you know, if you're serious about doing crypto or if you're serious about doing trading for a career, you're gonna to wanna to check out the private Discord group over here, we make traders. Like if you go through the education that is in place in this Discord server, let me tell you, you're gonna be able to learn to do the things that I do. Like if you just admire the fact that I'm that, like I'm always pretty accurate, then you know, this is where you're able to learn everything that I know because I put everything that I know into the course. 
So if you're interested, the link is in the description. There's currently only about 30 more spots remaining, so make sure you join the group before it fills up. And trust me when I say when it fills up, I'm closing that thing for, you know, a while. So anyways, back to this, you know, scenario that one of my, well, back to the scenario that Muffin Man drew, you can see that this is following sort of a Wyckoff accumulation and, you know, something like this could play out. So if we were to draw it out like that, then how this would look like is because we've already hit 41k, at least on futures, it will sort of look like this and then it is going to break, right? Basically, we will sort of consolidate between this range between, I don't know, 36k to 40k. Like, I don't know yet. It, remain, like, it remains to be seen whether or not this will come true, but this is just something to keep in mind. But either way, I am bullish on Bitcoin and so, so am I on Ethereum. In yesterday's video, I said that if Ethereum breaks above this level right here at 2200, I do expect it to go attack the protected high at 2400. Right now, we are doing exactly that. So I hope nobody shorted Ethereum because, you know, we're bullish, right? Granted, I did expect at least to get a pullback to, you know, these order block entries, but yeah, well, the market just has to do what the market has to do and, you know, we don't hurt anything against them. So right now, just to update on Ethereum, I do want to place another order block entry over there because this has currently become an order block, right? This is now a bullish order block. So if you're trying to get into Ethereum, this is a level that you're going to want to pay attention to, right? Right about, you know, somewhere about here, 2200. So if you, Ethereum does get a retrace back to any of these older block entries, it's going to be pretty decent entries. Now, the way you want to use these levels is, you know, dollar cost average. If you had a thousand dollars to play with, maybe go $200 here, $200 here, you know, maybe $400 here and the remainder of your position here because that's what all smart traders do and I want you to be a smart trader. Now, there is one other thing that I want to discuss, but before I do, if you haven't already followed me on Twitter at underscore the art of crypto, this is where I'm sharing the latest market updates and if you haven't already followed me there, you do not want to miss out. So as for the other thing that I wanted to discuss is if you go onto the altcoin season index, you can see that we are right now heading towards a Bitcoin season. Now, why is that, right? Even though the entire market is pumping, why are we heading towards Bitcoin season? And if you don't know what this is, basically during Bitcoin season, altcoins tend not to move very well, which means Bitcoin will outperform altcoins during, you know, Bitcoin season. So right now, it does seem like we are very close, or in fact, we are in Bitcoin season. So why is this, right? Even though the entire market is pumping right now, here's what you need to know. If we just go onto my private Discord server, and again, you are going to get access to all of this information in the private Discord server. So if you're interested, make sure you check it out. So this is the money flow in crypto. So if you just take a look here, right, during the entire time when the market was being very bearish, you know that a lot of people were sitting on fiat, right? A lot of people were sitting on the sidelines. So at the moment, because of this Bitcoin pump right here, I would assume that a lot of people have went from fiat into Bitcoin and thus Bitcoin is pumping, right? You have to understand, again, this is caused by institutions because the Bitcoin market cap is like multiple hundreds of billions of dollars. And if Bitcoin were to pump like 10, 20%, can you imagine the amount of money that is necessary in order to you know, generate such a move like this? So for real, retail has no way of accomplishing something like this. This is made purely by institutions. So you really have to follow what the institutions are doing. So right now, money has went into Bitcoin, which is why right now it is Bitcoin season. So if you just go back in time, right, just go back onto your own chart and you try to figure out exactly when Ethereum started to pump, right? This was during March, which let's not count that. So let's count it as September, right? If we just mark down this area at September and we go back to Bitcoin USD. So if we just mark down 13th of September, you can see that from 13th of September to, you know, uh, 9th of May was, you know, the Bitcoin pump. So I want you to mark, I want you to keep those dates in mind because if we go back to ETH right now, which is an old coin, you can see that although Bitcoin hit its top, right? Again, if I just go back to Bitcoin, I should really be using, multi yeah, what am I doing? I should really be using double charts here. So on the left side is Bitcoin and on the right side is Ethereum. So if we just zoom out like this, you can see that Bitcoin really hit its top at about 15th of April. Can you see this? Meanwhile, Ethereum actually hit its top a little like a month after Ethereum hit, like, a month after Bitcoin hit its top. So 
what does this mean? Basically, if we go back to this chart right here, money, right, first flows into Bitcoin. Because if Bitcoin does not make a significant amount of move, right, if Bitcoin doesn't make a significant move, altcoins cannot move well because Bitcoin is the leader. Bitcoin needs to take the lead. Until Bitcoin does a very significant move, like altcoins, maybe they'll pump, you know, 10, 20%, maybe 30%. Or in the case of AXS, it'll pump like 700%. But it doesn't change your it doesn't change the fact that if right th those are the outliers right those are the anomalies those are the exception and not the rule in order for you know most altcoins to really make a significant move bitcoin needs to take the lead so at the moment what i want to see right is bitcoin like basically this is what it means right that like during bitcoin season because all the money right again all the money has to go into bitcoin in order for it to make a significant move until bitcoin finishes its move where you know money starts to flow out of bitcoin right you have to think of it in this way right when bitcoin is pumping everyone's interested in bitcoin oh bitcoin's going to the moon baby bitcoin's going to 100k let's get in on bitcoin right that's how most people would think so you could imagine that all the money would be flowing into bitcoin that makes sense so if the money is flowing into bitcoin then you can imagine that not enough money is there for the alts to really move it is only until bitcoin finishes its move that you know altcoins really start to pop right in just the the one month right from from 15th of april you can see from 15th of april to you know just one month eth actually pumped by a hundred percent Whereas from 13th of September up till, you know, this point, ETH only really moved like, what, 600%? And that this was over the course of like over seven months. And just in the last, you know, the last month alone, it did a massive parabolic move. So you really have to understand that money flows in a cycle in crypto. So money first goes into Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin pumps and then... Once people get bored of Bitcoin, they're going to put the money into large caps like Ethereum, Polkadot, Chainlink, BNB, stuff like that. Those are large caps, ADA. And then after those large caps finish moving, then the money flows into big caps, low caps, and, you know, we repeat the cycle. Now, am I saying that this is a black and white thing? No, but here's how you can use this information to your advantage. So basically, whenever you see that Bitcoin is pumping, I want you to go look for some altcoins that have not pumped yet. So for example, right now Bitcoin is pumping. So maybe we go onto Litecoin and we see that Litecoin hasn't made a significant move yet. Or maybe it already has. <laughs> yeah, it definitely already has. So basically, whenever you see Bitcoin is pumping, right? Or when we are in Bitcoin season, I want you to accumulate altcoin positions because when Bitcoin season is finished, you're going to see altcoin absolutely explode anyways this video has been really impromptu and again i just wanted to say um if you were an aggressive trader if you were let's say a momentum trader maybe you could take advantage of the momentum that is in the markets right now which is really really bullish and maybe you could just take a market long however i do not preach that kind of trading and you know i sometimes do but i'm an advocate of buying low and selling high so whatever the case if bitcoin decides to like attack the highs at 50k 60k 64k right now i'm not gonna re really regret you know not getting into the markets right now and again if you were following me on my twitter you know that you know you don't always need to be in a trade wait for the trade to come to you and don't force any trades so that is my personal philosophy and that is the way I'd, i like to do things which means i will look for all the blocks in order to you know really identify some entries at the moment for bitcoin just now i already gave you the ethereum order blocks and right now i'm just going to add another order block onto bitcoin and this is where you know you know this is where i'm really going to try to get some bitcoin so if we just draw this and set the order block entry that is going to be at 34,900, you know, and you know, the, the levels that I set yesterday. So again, at the moment, it's really still early to tell. I made this video again, just as an emergency. I know it's been kind of ranty, kind of long, but you know, I just want to get this out there. And like, honestly, my best advice to you, if you don't know what you're doing, just take, just take it easy, right? It's for real. If you don't know what you're doing, just take it real easy and just wait for direction to come to you right if you get a falling wedge down into an order block and then that is going to be entry right you do not take trades in the middle of nowhere you take trades when it comes to your area of value so for example if bitcoin were to break above 41k right now something like this then you would enter along with the breakout because you know that you know most of the volume right most of the volume resistance if you just take a look at the vpvr on the side right now and the way you get this is just go to your indicators and type in visible range now this is a premium indicator basically you need to pay for trading view in order to get access to this and my advice to you if you were thinking about paying for trading view is go for it man what are you thinking 
why are you even thinking about this? As a trader, this is literally the only tool you're going to need, right? Period. Might as well invest in the only tool that you're going to need, right? Makes sense, right? And if you're interested to get a $30 discount code, it's in the description box below. So make sure you check that out. So if Bitcoin were to break above 40K, you can see that on the VPVR, there is literally a pretty much nothing, right? Holding it back from hitting back, like basically going back to 54K or maybe uh, this level right here at 50K or maybe even here at 45k so long story short if bitcoin does break above this level at 40k right now right not 41k 40k all right let's just mark down this level at about 40k if bitcoin does break above this level what you're going to want to do is first enter along with the breakout basically as the price is breaking above you enter along with the breakout or alternatively as it breaks above this level and it comes back down for a retest that's when you enter okay because contrary to popular belief, price actually does go in waves and it doesn't just go straight up. So the reason why I would recommend both of these entries is because it is pretty safe, right? As it breaks out or if you buy the retest, then your stop loss can be just right beneath this level. Maybe not that close, but like, you know, somewhere around here. And in this case, you know that usually previous resistance, right? And once you break through it, it should become future support, hence the word retest. And if it doesn't hold this level, then you just get stopped out, right? If it just falls right below this level, then you get stopped out. And that's perfectly fine because even the best traders in the world are wrong about half the time. And yet they're still wildly profitable. And why is that? Because they do not allow any single loss to really stop them out, like really affect their account. So it's okay to be wrong, just, but it's not okay for any single mistake to wipe you out. So the take profit targets again for Bitcoin is going to be at the previous highs, right? Remember, once you break out of, you know, once you go into a bullish order flow, you attack the previous highs. I wouldn't be surprised if we attack this previous high at 65K, but am I, do I think it's gonna happen instantly? Honestly, I don't know, right? It's seriously too early to tell, but I just wanna give you some sort of preparation and just know that the plan remains intact, right? Until these order blocks are broken, right to the downside until these order blocks are broken we are still bullish right but if we do break below these order blocks then you know we're bearish because order blocks are supposed to be institutional areas of value and if they don't hold then you know institutions they're not buying here then like that's that's the, that's the best indication right we follow the institutions and if the institutions are not buying here then that means they're probably short yeah which just ties back to that previous theory I talked about, about, you know, institutions. Like again, if you get stopped out on a short, you're buying. If you're buying, guess who's selling? That's right, institutions. So the way that you wanna use these levels right here is, you know, do dollar cost average. So for example, if you do buy the breakout here, then you're gonna wanna take maybe 10% of your position at 41K, maybe take 25% at 45.5K, maybe take the rest of the 25% at 50K, maybe, and then maybe, you know, save the rest of your you know, position as a moon bag and take it somewhere about, you know, 55K. You know, just, just an example. This is how you dollar cast average and every successful trader does it. So you should as well. Now, I know this video has sort of been off tangent a bit. Like I'm really just speaking off the top of my head right now. So honestly, if it's a bit confusing, I'm so sorry, but I just need to get my thoughts out there just so you're prepared, all right? Again, same thing for Ethereum. If it does break below all these order blocks, then, you know, we're bearish, all right? I do see Ethereum going, you know, 1500, 700-ish if we do break below these order blocks. Same thing, order blocks are institutional areas of value. They usually push the price here to close their shorts and flip long. So if you don't see a sign of that, then, you know, it's not bullish so just keep an eye out for that of course i will be making future videos about this as price action develops so you don't need to worry about that and if you watch until this point so far i really want you to comment in the comment section flip long so that i know who exactly are the real ones who have watched until this point and you know uh, watch or listen to me rant about what might happen to bitcoin and ethereum while at the same time not saying anything at all but yeah seriously thank you if you've watched until this point this is really off tangent as a video and as a matter of fact, I have to leave for the doctors right now, which is why, you know, I'm sort of rushing and not doing any planning. So yeah, comment down in the comment section, flip low if you've stayed until this point and just know that I absolutely love you for being such a, you know, loyal fan, I suppose. But yeah, at least you know that you are among the 10% of the people who did not have a as long of an who did not have as long of an attention span as you, and who just decided to you know go watch some reality show instead of watch this video in order to improve themselves. So just know that if you watch until this point so far, that success is going to find you. It is not a matter of if, but just a matter of when. And again, if you are serious about taking your trading game to the next level, you're going to want to check out the private Discord group. At the moment, if you just go onto the website, we have about 
30 spots remaining. And the reason why I capped this is because I want to be able to give focused attention to every single member in the group. So if you are interested in that focused attention, you're going to want to check out the private Discord group before it fills up. Because trust me, I opened 100 spots just, you know, five days ago and it's already, you know, filling up pretty quickly. So yeah, those are the levels to watch for Bitcoin and Ethereum. And let me just give you a moment to mark down those levels for yourself. And again, just note that this is not financial advice. I'm simply saying that if you were going to buy Bitcoin and Ethereum anywhere, these would be pretty good levels to do so rather than in the middle of nowhere. But again, I'm not a certified financial advisor. Neither is this financial advice. So anyways, made a gain to be with you, my friend, and peace.